Welcome back. For centuries, the San people of southern Africa were oppressed and thrown off their land by white settlers. They were seen as nothing more than primitive hunter-gatherers with no future. Today, these two tribes are working as partners. Spending weeks or months in the bush, Tibber and his fellow bushmen follow in the footsteps of their ancestors, albeit their mission now is commercial. Nowadays, their prey are so-called problem animals that kill farmers' livestock. The jackal knows the smell of poison. People have used poison too often. When the jackal smells it, he moves on. We also use the urine of the jackal when setting a trap to disguise our smell. The jackal is a rascal. He is very clever and difficult to catch. Tibber and his colleagues know the ways of these animals and can track them and catch them individually. Catching animals is one thing, but tracking down armed poachers, another. We have a lot of responsibilities. We attend to stock theft, car theft, fruit and vegetable theft, house breaking, poaching and farm attacks. We are always on the lookout for suspicious looking people. Sometimes we even deal with murders. Crime has been rising in South Africa, including attacks on farms. This has created a market demand for business ventures like the Bushman Security Company. In this company, the sand guards are not mere employees. The two clans own 60% of the business. Eventually, it will be 80%. The mission of the business can often be life-saving. Times may be changing for the sand. The company started by Colonel Skumbi now has over 300 trained sand guards. Hundreds more are expected to follow. The business is growing into other parts of South Africa. Demand is so high that Teba and the Colonel are struggling to train enough new recruits. They are killing the farmers. And in order to know how to combat this, we have to know the methods and strategies of the criminals. We must be able to read the signs they leave in order to foresee their moves and actions. Then we warn the farmer of a possible attack and how it will happen. The police and the farmer can be prepared then. To keep the business sustainable, the sand must pass on the knowledge to those in their community who never learned the ways of the bush. Colonel Scooby's son, a paratrooper and survival specialist who was trained by Tibba, helps with the training. The recruits are set and exercise to decipher clues on the ground. They must determine when this fire was put out, whether a man or woman walked here, in which direction he or she walked. In South Africa's security business, the ancestral knowledge of the sand is just as important for survival as in the Angolan bush. Preserving these skills has turned into an issue of vital importance again. With the help of Sanda Security Company, we can keep our traditions alive. We can still practice our skills, perform our dances, and hold on to our traditional rules in the homes. We want to be part of modern society, but we also want to upkeep the old sand values and traditions. In this exercise, the new recruits lose. They walk straight into an ambush. In South African reality, this would be lethal. Tibba is a fount of knowledge for his young nephew Mario, who wants to follow in his uncle's footsteps. That's why it's so important to teach the next generation and our children about the old ways. We can't let things go on like this. We have to get them back to where our ancestors were. They must be cracks in tracking and hunting. These skills are old, but they will help them for the future. They'll help them to survive and make a living in this new world. 
There is a lot to learn, and success comes in reading the signs of the bush. It's fine. This is Tibber's world. It's all fascinating, but alien to Mario, a child who has grown up in the half-modernized township. The San youth may need role models such as Tibber if they are to maintain their traditions. For too long, the youth have watched their tribal elders fall into depression and alcoholism. Tibber, who had to survive as a farmhand and petrol attendant, did not lose his dignity. He is one of the last pillars of hope for these communities. As an instructor for the company, he holds the highest rank in the field. Hunting down poachers, their latest client is a game farm manager whose animals are being killed by criminals. Tibber and his colleagues can spend days, weeks, or even months out in the bush, covering an area extending across thousands of hectares. They are adept at concealing themselves. The snares and roots used by the poachers have to be identified before any action can be taken. This can be a tedious endeavor, but once he knows the poacher's routine, he pounces. South African farmers are losing livestock worth millions of dollars every year to poachers. This does not only damage the economy, but is also a threat to the jobs of thousands of farm workers. Tiba and his wife have come a long way. In their new house in Platfontein Township, they often think of the Angolan bush where they met as children. Tiba has raised the outlook for his family enormously. He has the highest rank in the new Bushman venture, being a member of the board along with the clan leaders. He is one of four instructors and qualified in all sectors of the company's fieldwork. Traditionally, the San rarely openly show their emotions, but Tiba is clearly overjoyed with the new prospects for his family and greater clan. His uniform, badges and rank are the pride of the family and an open statement of his grown status in the community. Now I know God gave us this place. I knew God would provide us with a chance for a better life. He knows we are poor, but I knew he will give us something. That is how we started at Sanda Security. I love working there because at last I can roam through the bush again and earn a living there. When I was small, we would meet in groups of 20 to 30 at night. We would sit around a fire and an elder would take charge. He told us the stories of the day and taught us about the rules of our people. Children would always come there to the fire and listen to the stories and learn how to behave. Here in Platfontein, well, the kids got distracted by too many other things. They just wouldn't listen anymore. For the San, one of the most important aspects of the new opportunity is the revival of the ancient tradition of sitting around a fire listening to the elders' stories. In recent years, there have been no tales to tell, no feats of hunting prowess, no one to look up to, no one to respect. But today, Tiba has the chance to be like his ancestors, to continue the oral traditions, their prey may have changed, but in the Sands version of hunting, it remains as exciting as ever. 
The San have defied hundreds of years of history and what seemed to be their inevitable demise. Now they have adapted their age-old traditions to the modern world. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again on Witness.